Most couples come in together now uh, to buy their engagement ring. She'll say, this is what I like, and this is my ring size. Yeah. And it can be a fun okay. date. And, you know, as a guy, you can just say, let's just do this. I'm not saying that this is going to happen. Mm. But I strongly advise that you never ask if you don't already know the answer is going to be yes. I don't know. It sounds like a cool first date. Yeah. <laughs> Who right? knows? I've, I've seen it. What's up, guys? We're back. It's the Best of Midland, Texas podcast, where we interview business owners, entrepreneurs, and personalities right here in the best city, Midland, Texas. Go ahead and check out our website, bestofmidlandtx.com. Check it out. And if you're a business owner, listen, you can add your business completely free. Uh, get a free listing, register today. We have an amazing guest today, Michael Fleck. He's the owner of Occasions Fine Jewelry in Midland. You know, you know the place guys, when you get in trouble, uh, you got to go there. <laughs> Occasions sells the best engagement rings, bracelets, necklaces. They even have like $4,000 chef's knives, which look amazing. Maybe I could put them on layaway or something. <laughs> Michael, we are ecstatic to have you on today. Thanks for thanks for being here. Oh, thank you both. Listen, we'll just jump right into it. So looked on your website, said that your father actually started the business. Can you just tell us a little bit about the history? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it started in uh, Service Drug, my uncle's drugstore, actually. Okay. Um, he went out on his own. He was a jeweler for Zales and some locals in Oklahoma for a while and it went out on his own, didn't do well, came back to Midland to start over after a bankruptcy and uh, started with one case of jewelry, not even jewelry, just one empty case, <laughs> um, a folding chair and a jeweler's bench and made what he could Um maxed out his credit cards and that's where occasions started was he selling and doing like repairs too or the way he puts it he would do anything okay if you said something he said yes he was hungry uh actually hungry you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so if money came near him he would take it <laughs> nice. i mean i like the style already so what year did you take over the business i moved back into midland in 2009 and just gotten married a few months earlier, took the new wife to home. I worked for my parents until 2014 when I bought the company from them. Was it something that like he handed down or is it were you always thinking about going into the jewelry business since the 90s or? Uh, for the most part, um, <laughs> I spent a while in college trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, the family business was always in the back of my mind. I chose lawyer for a while, went and took the LSAT and did decent and was looking at some different colleges and just went, mm, no, I'm i I'm a jeweler. Talked to my dad about it and uh, we made a, a plan and I, I went and worked for a, a famous jewelry store in Oklahoma city called BC Clark jewelers, well over a hundred years old jewelry wow. store. And um, I worked directly under uh, Coleman and Mitchell Clark and learned a ton from them. My dad, called me up one day and was like, if you don't want me to sell this place, <laughs> I'm getting tired. <laughs> Come home. And I said, okay. So it wouldn't uh, be an episode about uh, jewelry if we didn't talk about engagement rings. What do you find is the biggest mistake people make when attempting to buy an engagement ring? That's a great question. I think the number one thing is spending way over their budget a lot yeah. of times. I always appreciate when people do that. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Uh, spending over your budget is always welcome at occasions, but I don't think that you should. I don't want you having half of a honeymoon instead of a full honeymoon uh, just to have a, a bigger diamond. You know, For the guy who comes in, when she sees the ring, she is going to you know, get excited, start bouncing around a little bit, uh, hug you, kiss you, call 50 people <laughs> while you're putting it on her finger. She's not even going to look at it for a day or two <laughs> because the it's not really about the ring very much, you know. The gesture. It, yeah, it's about you and it's about her and it's about you saying this is a forever thing. Yeah. The ring, and I guess counterintuitively, is not that important. Come in and and we'll take care of you. We'll find what she loves. We'll find what you can afford, but don't stress out about it. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it'll all be, it'll all work out. It'll all be okay. Everybody talks about the four C's, right? So mm -hmm. there, it's clarity, cut, carrot, and. You can do it. 
color. Color. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna get it. I was gonna get it eventually. You were eventually. Listen, let's talk about the fifth C that I don't think anybody talks about. Cost. Yeah. How do you balance the four C's um, coming in, especially when budget is right. a major concern? Yeah, and it almost always is. I don't have Warren Buffett coming in on a regular basis. <laughs> uh, he actually owns his own jewelry store, so oh. he would never come and shop with me. Um, <laughs> so. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, one of the biggest uh, jewelry stores in the country. Why am I not surprised? Yeah, That's, right? Yeah. So if you're not Warren Buffett and you're coming in and you're trying to get something at a reasonable price, you can, one, look at alternatives. There are lab-created diamonds. There are colored gemstones. They all make fabulous engagement rings. We'd mm -hmm. love to sell them. Two, when you do your research, and everybody does, and it's a great thing. I'm happy when people do the research because I have a whole can thing about – D, E, F, G, H, I, color, clarity, all of those things. And when I don't have to say it, it's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of websites make a big deal about these things. And so they talk about like D, E, and F are the rarest and, and the most colorless. And that's great. It's absolutely true. But that doesn't mean that an I or a J colored diamond isn't beautiful. Mm -hmm. And isn't like when you're talking about that difference in color, it is hardly noticeable. It's most noticeable in a jewelry store when you're under lights that are built to uh, break down the color so mm -hmm. that you can see it. You go take it out into the sunshine and you can barely see it. You'll see my uh, employees take people out to go look in regular sunshine regularly. Yeah. We've thought about adding outdoor seating out there so that you can have a comfortable place to sit down and look oh, at like it. Oh, like maybe during... a glass of champagne. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Make a day of it. So, but the color, the clarity, all of those things are, um, you know, the finest of the fine is great, but it, a very slightly included or a slightly included diamond, not anything you can see with the naked eye. Yeah. Uh, I, J, K, me looking across the table, I couldn't tell you whether it's a D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, or L. You yeah. need your loop to see yeah, that you, much. You have to be looking close. Yeah. Is it bright? Is it shiny? There's some stuff I like to do whenever I'm buying diamonds to supply our store. Um, I'll actually, you know, put a big old thumbprint right on the top of the diamond. They hate it when I do that, by the way. <laughs> you know, when you're wearing a diamond, you're going to, put your finger on it at some point yeah. and you need to know, does it still look pretty when it's dirty? So I actually dirty up my diamonds ahead of time and something you can do too. Yeah. There's always a selvic cloth or a little bit of alcohol within reach of any jeweler at all times. So they can clean it right back up and mm -hmm. make it shine. But is it shiny when you first look at it? Is it bright and beautiful? Has a lot of light colors. There's white light, but there's also color light. Mm -hmm. Can you see a lot of different colors in a diamond whenever you're playing with it. Like a prism? Kind? Yeah, okay. like a prism. Diamonds are cut to refract just as they are to reflect. So instead of looking at it through a jeweler's loop, just take it you know, a little ways away from you, twist it around in the light, dirty it up, twist it around the light again, clean it back up, look at it again. Mm -hmm. If it's pretty now, it'll be pretty 100 years from now. That's yeah. why people like diamonds. <laughs> Have you ever had somebody come in and you've had to tell them that, like they, they assume that they're massive diamond was was real and you had to tell them it was fake like does that happen often uh yeah um, that's so crazy several times a year i mean anything that you can share the video of <laughs> <laughs> uh usually it's grandma's ring and uh -huh. grandma passed and then they they bring it in to just find out how much it's worth they don't even know if they're going to sell it or not and i okay. have to tell them yeah grandma had great taste but that taste was also in the fashion side uh, yeah it's not this is you know this is glass uh, this is a cubic zirconia. Um, this is a moist night. We've been getting a lot of moist nights. Ten years from now, we're going to get a lot of lab created people who, you know, didn't. You always should, but didn't tell their significant other that this was a lab created yeah. diamond yeah. versus a mine diamond, and left it in the will. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Price. You just tell. Uh, like I do pretty much anything in my job, you just do it with a whole lot of empathy. Mm -hmm. Sit down and. Look them in the eye and tell it to them straight, but tell it to it with a kind heart and things go over well, almost always. I feel like Moissanite has uh, kind of gained popularity mm -hmm. as far as like, you know, still a beautiful gem, but you're not going to spend quite as much unless you go huge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is that the one that's from like asteroids or yeah. <laughs> comets? Yeah. Okay. What? Yeah. It's, oh, I didn't know that. The original came from 
outer space somehow, some way, and then we figured out how to make it ourselves. Cool. So, See, I want a space diamond. Black diamonds. Uh, I natural love those. Black diamonds come from outer space. What? So, what about what's your take on um, the salt and pepper diamonds? I love them. I. I I am so easygoing with this stuff. Uh, people expect me to be very snobby about yeah. my jewelry, but I think it's cool. Yeah. I, it's, at the end of the day, it's like, man, that's a cool design. Why not? You know? I um, saw, yeah, I saw, I was looking online. I was like, oh, well, that looks kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of my style. It looks Why didn't you in, show them to me? I'm industrial because you have one already. You have a diamond. <laughs> Maybe you good. need a diamond. We're doing good. I just, I like to look. Fair. Okay. Yeah. I will. Uh, I like to look at pretty things. I'll send you TikToks. <laughs> as, Great. Send her in. Come and hang yeah. out with me for a, an hour. Right. He's got the yeah. He's got the outdoor patio now. We can you know, <laughs> have some mimosas. Exactly. When I bought Tara's mm-hmm. ring, she was living in Midland, and I was living in Las Vegas. Everybody was like, "Well, you need to know her ring size," and I was like, "Well, it's not possible." So <laughs> how does how does one find their partner's ring size without them having to come in and and clearly let them know they're purchasing a ring besides like sleeping pills it's not possible <laughs> don't do that oh, okay. i'm just gonna Hot i take. am not advising that you do sleeping <laughs> do pills. not drug yeah. your okay. significant okay. other i have a slightly different take on this most uh about i want to say 65 70 percent of uh couples come in together now uh to buy their engagement ring um they a lot of times won't buy it that day but she'll say this is what I like, and this is my ring size. Yeah. And it can be a fun okay. date, and, you you know, as a guy, you can just say, let's just do this. I'm not saying that this is going to happen, mm. but I strongly advise that you never ask if you don't already know the answer is going to be yes. I don't know. It sounds like a cool first date. Yeah. <laughs> Who right? knows? I've, I've seen it. I mean, <laughs> I've seen first dates come on in. Uh, I... Uh, would run so fast. Right. <laughs> I'm going to end up on Dateline. I, I doubt those <laughs> lasted. Yeah. <laughs> but I do think that they were probably a fun weekend. There's some stuff online that people say, yeah, give this a try. I've never seen any of it that works accurately. Mm-hmm. You know? If you have to do this in a way where she doesn't see the ring at all beforehand, try and take a picture of like maybe your hand and her hand t- together so that I can get a sense of it. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, we'll, we'll make it a little too big. So that it can go on because nobody wants to get the ring out and then it only get to like <laughs> it's stuck mid-knuckle. on the knuckle. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, we'll tailor it down. So we have Valentine's Day coming up, mm-hmm. um, our anniversary coming up. What would you recommend as a good gift to buy for men? Oh, uh, William Henry Knives, always great. King Baby Jewelry, uh, if he's got a bit of an edge to him, if he likes that more biker look and even mm-hmm. if he doesn't like i actually like the dapper look but with a little bit of edgy jewelry yeah i think that looks good on a guy g-shock watches always great yeah straight up they're cool <laughs> they're fun <laughs> michael you're hitting all the spots yeah <laughs> we are about 90 percent built for uh the female population mm-hmm. but uh there's some stuff for guys too yeah so. next month is our one year anniversary okay i've been looking at like traditional what do you, oh. you know what i mean like a, Paper and all this stuff. Like, do you have any advice Cotton. of like traditional versus yes. um, modern or yeah, non-traditional? That, that list needs to be updated. Right? To be honest with you, nobody even, wants paper and cotton and mm. wood. Well, even like <laughs> the more modern version. I think for the first year, it's a clock. Yeah, I don't want a clock. That's weird. But clock is also a watch. That's true. That's true. It's black and gold G Shock. Uh, if somebody comes <laughs> in, I always just say a diamond. Like, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. what? What is it for the 14th anniversary? Diamond. Mm-hmm. Really? Sure. <laughs> one do you want to be one. happy at yeah. your anniversary, yeah. <laughs> or do you want to say, "Here is this wood that yeah. I handed you." Here's a notebook. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, as far as a one-year anniversary, or or really any anniversary, when I'm working with somebody, we sit down and start with the basics. Like, there is a basic amount of uh, jewelry for any jewelry box. So it's like diamond studs, diamond hoop earrings, the drop diamond pendant, a second pair of diamond studs. If you have all of that covered, then the big basic is like the diamond tennis bracelet. Oh, then, Tara, cover your ears. Yeah. <laughs> She's in oh, wait, I can't. And then after those <laughs> basics, I just start with, you know, tell me about her. Is she an outgoing person? Does she want everybody to see her when she walks in the room? Mm. Or is she more quiet? Is she a reserved person? 
person. What are her hobbies? I want to get to know her. I, we, you and I have to come up with a reason for her to come in. So then once I know her personality and I keep saying me, I, I'm not on the sales floor. Don't come asking for me. <laughs> I'm not going to, uh, I'm not coming out of my, of my cave. Probably we have trained every Friday for 20 years on just this, like yeah. how to spot and figure out the, the perfect piece of jewelry uh, for the guy who's coming in. Y'all do the, um, where like if somebody buys their diamond from you, mm -hmm. they can come back and, and trade it up. Yep. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, I like that. Yeah. We, uh, you just have to roughly double, mm -hmm. uh, which is very easy to do. Can women come in and like put together like a wish list? Oh yeah. That's probably, um, something that people don't realize about our store. I got to find a better vehicle to explain that to people because uh, I was hanging out at my kid's soccer game and somebody said that and I said, just make a wish list. And then all of a sudden all the soccer moms are surrounding me like, you guys do that? And <laughs> like I could come in and then all you'd have to do is pick one out of these five items. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Wow. And they all came and made wish lists, by the way. <laughs> so, nice. Yeah, that makes it easy for yeah. the, the spouse. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna buy it, do it right. I mean, get something she you know that she likes because she picked it out. And it's still a surprise because she doesn't know which one, unless you get all of them. Yeah, we get. How dare you, Tara? <laughs> Girlfriends get together and they come in, and all of them make a wish list. Spend you know an hour to open up some wine, grab some beers or something like that. And yeah. Her. Have a good time looking, making a wish list. They, they, we always suggest, you know, you have your aspirational piece, the piece that you don't think he's ever going to get you. Mm -hmm. and then you have your pieces that you think, you probably do this. And then you have your kind of minimum, like this is a this is the price point item. It might be a hard Christmas come Christmas. We're in a boom and bust. You don't know. Mm -hmm. This is months earlier. Um, and as long as you're happy with everything that's on that list, you'd be surprised how many times the guy goes straight for the aspirational. Oh, wow. she, I can't even believe she would put that on there. I'm going to show her. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> teach her a lesson. $200,000 diamond nope, coming up. Not happening. <laughs> yes, teach her that lesson. <laughs> Your social media is, is really great. That's we see, uh, Whitney Smith. She works she's, She does an amazing job. Uh, so you guys taking advantage of a video, and it looks like it's a fun place to work. I try and make it fun. You know, the... Um, we have 18 We Believes. I think you've seen some of them. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of those things are designed to say, if you're not having fun, you can't get your clients to have fun. Like, If you don't like your job, it will show to a client. I don't think that there's a way that you can hide that. Mm -hmm. You know, We've all been to a store where they obviously do not want to be there. Yeah. They don't even like so, each other. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Job number one for me is make sure that they're actually enjoying being there. I really loved a video where you guys like sort of recreated the eighties, like a uh, full house yeah. type of intros where everybody just kind of turns with the, the cheesy music. I was like, I was like, man, we got to do that. that it must've been a fun day. Uh, that was a fun week and a half or something like oh, that wow. in order to get that just right. <laughs> okay. uh, Whitney is also a perfectionist as far as yeah. that goes. And it was, you know, no, it needs to be cheesier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was hard one for me, but yeah. we got it done. It was great. I think that between the staff photos on the website and the social media presence, it shows the consumer that, like, while this is a fine jewelry store, like, it's not pretentious and snobby. And, like, you're going to come in there and feel kind of like family and enjoy your time. That's great because that's the exact goal that Yay. we set out to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted – um you know, especially when we did the remodel and we made our store just that much nicer. Yeah. We, we needed to make it that much more inviting, too. I, I get it from somebody who's bought plenty of things that I'm not comfortable with buying. Mm -hmm. You sit outside and you're like, okay. You know, you hype yourself up to even walk through the front door. And I know that happens in my store. So mm -hmm. the whole goal of our marketing is to at least come across like we're approachable yeah. because I don't want you to not approach me. Mm -hmm. I mean, just come on in, give us a try. Um, and then once they're in and they're made comfortable, it, it goes easy every time. Yeah. But I figure the hardest part of our job is getting the people to come through the front door. Mm -hmm.
Any sort of events or any other announcements that are coming up? We have our yearly Levion show coming up in early February. That's always a blast. They bring literal millions of dollars worth of jewelry wow. to take a look at. I mean, that that company, you hear Levion um, constantly. They do have a good marketing department, <laughs> but uh, most people don't know that that is a 500-year-old company. It is wow. double the age of the United States of America. Great company to work with. And uh, they they bring out some amazing stuff for us, just jaw dropping. Everybody knows their their chocolate jewelry, and the, the chocolate jewelry is wonderful. But mm-hmm. They also have some of the finest like, colored gemstones you can find. Put that on our calendar. Yeah. Okay. Cho- <laughs> chocolate coins. Got it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I will, you got it. I will sell you all the chocolate coins you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael, we really appreciate you stopping by today. You live here or if you're from out of town. Uh, when you come in, hit occasions, find jewelry, pick up a diamond. Or, or a pocket knife. Or a pocket knife. Now you said Both is good. Well, yeah. <laughs> Both is good. A duo. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.